We're immensely proud of our history and work to date and to be associated with such tremendous laureate organizations. We've, uh, we hope that the prize and its stature as the largest humanitarian award in the world provides a valuable seal of approval to organizations. We hope it opens doors and we hope it facilitates and expands the already tremendous work being done by these world-class organizations. A word about Conrad Hilton himself. Conrad was a businessman and a, philo uh, and a philanthropist. First, he was a businessman with big dreams. He grew up in modest means. He purchased his first hotel in Cisco, Texas, almost 100 years ago in 1919. He built that into a chain of hotels in the 1920s, and then he lost all but one of them due to the Great Depression. He was kept afloat by hard work and by the help of friends and, and colleagues, which he never forgot. But still, even in the depths of the Depression, he knew how to dream big. When he read in a newspaper that the new Waldorf Astoria Hotel was built in New York in 1931, he cut the picture out from the newspaper and he kept it on his desk saying, improbably, I am going to buy that hotel. <laughs> and buy it he did in 1949. And in 1955, he made the largest commercial real estate deal in, in American history by buying the, the rival Statler Hotels. Uh, one of Conrad's favorite phrases was, think big, act big, dream big. This phrase is written on the walls of the foundation. It's one of the basic values and drivers of our work, and it is the spirit of the Hilton Humanitarian Prize. Conrad Hilton was also a man of great compassion. He was charitable during his lifetime with a heart for the disadvantaged. He was grateful to those who had helped him and he himself, when he himself was in need, and he was shaped by a deep spirituality. On his death, he left 97% of his wealth to the Conrad N. Hilton Foundation with the mandate in his last will and testament to relieve the suffering, the, the distressed, and the destitute. Since his hotel revenues had come from all over the world, so too, he decided, would the grants his foundation made be global without regard to race, religion, or country? And Conrad Hilton was a man of ideas and action. He saw the hotels he built in Istanbul, in Cairo, and Rabat as bridges of understanding between cultures. And I think he would have loved what Zainab had to say today. He would be troubled by today's divided world globally and domestically, and he would have had ideas about how to improve things. Conrad Hilton would have appreciated the theme of this year's symposium as compassion, collaboration, and smart solutions were all part of his approach to business and to philanthropy. And he would have pushed us to articulate a vision and a dream of a high-performing system as we consider the future of humanitarian action. So, as we are gathered in the Waldorf Astoria, the crown jewel in Conrad's hotel empire, I feel he's with us here in spirit, impressed at how far his philanthropic efforts have come and how many people's lives he's touched as a result of a crazy dream he had in 1919 when he bought his first hotel. And he would certainly approve of this year's winner of the Hilton Humanitarian Prize, the Task Force for Global Health. Without a doubt, the Task Force thinks big, dreams big, and acts big. International in scope, this year's winner is dedicated to addressing large-scale health problems, primarily affecting the world's poor. The Task Force specializes in neglected global diseases, vaccines, field epidemiology, and public health informatics, and works to provide all people the opportunity to live healthy and productive lives. Last year, the organization reached hundreds of millions of people in 151 countries as a result of collaborative programs that it supported around the world. And since its founding in 1984 by public health legend Dr. Bill Fagey, uh, here with us today, the task force has become an agile and valued platform for bringing organizations together to deliver high impact solutions. And while I personally had no say in the jury's uh, choice of the, the task force for global health, I have to say that I, I applauded wholeheartedly when I heard of the, uh, of the decision because I in my own career saw firsthand uh, the, the results and the ambition of their work. My own interaction with the task force began in the early 1990s when I was a 30-something, well, Hadil's age, field, field office director with Save the Children in Mali, in West Africa, one of the world's poorest countries. 
I worked in a district in the south of Mali, an area about the half the size of Connecticut, with no electricity, no running water, no paved roads. Uh, and we, with the help of the Ministry of Health and, and many people, in, uh, community leaders, we helped enroll tens of thousands of children in a health information system uh, and, and worked to get um, all those children vaccinated. We delivered thousands of doses of Mectazan, provided free by Merck to fight river blindness. A word that comes to mind when I think of that time is choreography. We all had a role to play, we had a time to be there, we had a place to be, and we knew what it was. I can remember when I, I, would, I came once uh, to our district capital on a Friday evening with a message from the capital, the capital city, that there would be a vaccination team in a village about 90 kilometers away the next morning. And I tapped our program manager on the shoulder and I said, would you mind getting on your motorcycle and going out there and letting them know? And he was off like a shot. And that's the way we worked. We didn't, we, we heard what we needed to do and, and we followed through. And remember, this is the time before cell phones, before the internet, before email. And all of that was accomplished uh, with, with tremendous efficiency. We learned a lot of things about strategy, about logistics, about politics, and tackling big challenges. Lessons that we then applied to other fields, such as education, microenterprise, water supply, and gender equality. What I didn't know then is that I was being given a master course in, in smart solutions by the task force, and which had, had transmitted to the for, farthest corners of the globe ideas about how to do this work and how to approach grand challenges, and transmitted them through organizations like WHO, like UNICEF, like Save the Children. Those lessons have been fundamental to my career and fundamental to thousands of other people. Now, the Hilton Prize jury was, uh, was particularly impressed with the collaborative nature of, of the organization's work. You've heard the word a lot today, but I think you'll come away today with a stronger and richer definition of collaboration than you came in with. Uh, and as Maggie said, often working behind the scenes, uh, not seeking the limelight for themselves, but helping other organizations accomplish amazing things that those organizations didn't think they themselves were, were capable of doing. So we applaud their smart, hard work, we applaud their humility, but we do think it's time to shine a spotlight on them for their tireless efforts and their impact on humanity.